Hey guys, we're back and ready for day two of our Whipple Supercharger installation. I think uh, Brian's getting ready to get started with some of the coolant bags and things like that, so we'll follow along and see what he's up to. So as you can see here, Brian's got the new uh, intercooler pump mounted for the Whipple Supercharger. Now we're going to start working in some of the hose into the uh, heat exchanger and everything here. What Brian's doing now is he's basically clearing out the active grill shutters. Again, we told you yesterday that the grill shutters are deactivated in the tune. Obviously, if all this will fit back in there, which we're not sure if it does or not, but we're going to try to get in there because it does help direct airflow where it needs to go to the radiator and everything. So if Brian can get this back in with all said and done with the install, we're definitely going to want to put that back in there. So Brian has this all mocked up here. Uh, everything seems to fit fine with the heat exchanger. Um, I'm assuming even with the oversized heat exchanger, it looks like all this would still fit uh, under here, just depending on how low the uh, thicker one is. But I, I think it's all going to fit. And again, once you put the grill on, what Brian was saying, you put the grill on, everything's going to basically direct, like we said before, direct all this airflow really where it needs to go. Because by doing that, forces the air into the uh, what they call the LTR, the uh, heat exchanger, and then also the radiator and your uh, transmission cooler as well. You do got a lot of stuff up here, so the more air you can keep going in where it needs to go, the better off you're going to be. Keep everything running as cool as you want. Tighten all this back up. To get to the uh, coolant hoses and stuff down here, it's going to be much easier, obviously, to get the air box out. I'm sure that's some Whipple instructions, but again, Brian's an old hand and expert, so he's just kind of going in at it on his own but and going in the order that he likes to do these things in. So for the air box over here, we remove the uh, cover and then this uh, large plug here. Both of those, taking those off will make it easier to get the uh, air box out, which you can see we've already pulled off here. Then to get the wiring harness out of your way, you're just going to remove a couple clips off the uh, front of the head here. So what we're getting ready to do now, we're getting ready to do the uh, bracket system on the front, the pulleys. you got your belt system bolt bag here from Whipple. Again, a lot of these are labeled really nice. What we just done, you're pulling down here is where the ground strap goes. And uh, Brian just took this out. You relocate this up here, basically. And all that, of course, is in your instructions. But what you're doing, you're relocating the ground strap up out of the way. That way you've got room for your whole bracket assembly with the supercharger. Now we're taking off the uh, water pump pulley off the front. Next. Brian's going to take off the actual water pump. No, no? just a couple bolts. Okay, a couple bolts. So they're going to give us some longer bolts, I assume, to uh, hook to the bracket. Correct. I don't know about you, but when I start seeing brackets and pulleys and things going in, I start to get excited. I start thinking about some boost. What about you, Brian? You get excited? What, exc what excites you, Brian? Not a lot. Not a lot. <laughs> Brian's pretty simple. He takes it pretty easy. He doesn't get in any trouble. He keeps his nose clean. That's why we like Brian. Then a lot of times we start getting some of these bolts in and kind of get them all get them all working in first. Not completely tighten up. Get everything lined up. Make sure everything's in good, and then let's go around for a final round of tightening everything. Yeah. As Brian said, these are all 22 foot pounds on these uh, bolts on this bracket here. You hear a little click, you know you've reached your pre-set torque setting. Your factory system comes with a spring-loaded tensioner that sits right here on the Whipple system. It's going to come with a, with a fixed tensioner here, and it does give you some adjustment, and it also comes with a spring-loaded tensioner. So you get two tensioners, so it does give you a little bit more belt adjustment. You can see you can loosen this, and you do get quite a bit of adjustability there. And then we'll have our spring-loaded tensioner as well. You get it close with the manual tensioner, and then you let the spring-loaded tensioner take over. That way you don't over-tighten and put any extra stress on the crank or anything. And again, you can see up here, we're relocating the ground wire up here, where it was down here. And now you see your spring-loaded tensioner is going to be down on this uh, left side, front uh, passenger side of the vehicle, instead of over on the right side. What we've got here is a new bracket. If you remember in the first video, we talked about this solenoid that basically puts fluid into the uh, transmission. What Brian's saying is more than likely, just like the F-150s, there's no thermostat in the valve body anymore where there used to be a thermostat. So this is a computer controlled solenoid down here for the transmission. Basically, when it's under temperature, it's going to shut that off so that no fluid can flow to the transmission. 
and then once it's up to temperature, that'll open up and allow the uh, fluid to start flowing more. But that'll allow your temperature to get up to, or the temperature in your transmission to get up to, to the speed quicker. A lot of guys run these transmissions too cool, especially when they go to the track. I never in our uh, race car back here. I'll show you. I call it a race car now, but it's it's still a speed car. It's our single turbo kit. So when this car back here makes almost 1,500 wheel. We're still doing the factory 10 speed in this thing. And uh, with this car, I never make a pass unless my transmission temperature is at least 160 degrees. A lot of guys got there 130, 140, 120, 110. The transmission fluid is entirely too thick to do its job. It's never going to shift right. It's never going to act right. People want to blame it on the transmission. They just don't understand transmissions. And everybody always thinks cooler is better, and that is simply not the case. I personally love these 10-speed transmissions. This transmission, this started in our 2018 body that's in this car. We've been driving this since 2017. So we've got about six and a half years on this transmission. We have never broken one single hard part. We probably have 500 passes on the car. I'd say three to 400 in the eight-second zone. We have never broken a hard part. Only thing we do on these transmissions is a Sunco Stage 2 kit. This gives you a, a modified e-drum, a modified F-snap ring, extra clutches in the E and the F, and that's it. 1,500 wheel, this 10-speed is badass. Our goal this year, we really want to go 7s with the 10-speed. We'd like to go 7s consistently, so that's going to be the goal this year. And a big shout-out to our partners at Suncoast, who uh, you can see on the wrap there, who uh, work really hard on this 10R80 program. Uh, they've done a lot with them. You see a lot of guys out there promoting all this crazy stuff and $5,000, $6,000 dollar rebuilds on transmission. Brian rebuilds these. If you take it out, bring it up, he'll rebuild for $850 bucks plus the transmission kit, which is $2,250. Um, if you need an R&R, &R, um, you know, that's going to cost you a little bit more. But there's no secret recipe on these transmissions. These stage 2 Suncoast kits, that's all you need. Fred's now installing the new bracket on the solenoid like we talked about. The thing I don't think people understand is how much engineering and time goes into these kits. I mean, Whipple's had these uh, cars pre-production for like two years. They've been working on this thing. It takes so much time and money and engineering to engineer a kit to where every bracket, every bolt, every nut, to where you've got 100% of everything you need to install this supercharger kit. You really got to give your, uh, you know, take your hats off to these guys for the work that they do and the engineering that goes into this stuff. Something else you'll notice up here is that we've got this all cleaned up. Basically, you cut about an inch and a quarter, you said? Three quarters. Inch and three quarters out of this hose. Whipple basically relocates this up, moves this onto this side. That way, this pulls all these hoses and things like that away from all the pulleys and everything like that. Just, you know, gives you some extra room up here and makes it a lot cleaner. Now, here's the uh, pros and cons of having your own shop with about a million dollars inventory. You just walk around like it's a grocery store, like we see a Reich 170 thermostat. We're going to test fit, see if the thermostats are the same. MFP crank support, we're going to grab one of these and we'll test it out, see if it works along with this new 2024 kit. Might as well test parts like this so we know if they're going to work with uh, this current generation of Mustang. While we're doing our Whipple install here, one of the things we're going to test out is the uh, 6 rib MFP crank support and a Reich 170 thermostat. This is all stuff that works with previous generation. MFE crank support works from 2011 to 2020, 23. We're just going to see if this is going to fit on the uh, 2024 since some of the bracketry looks to be a little bit different, uh, but we are hoping that it will carry over. So we're testing out this uh, crank support. Start with the two longest bolts on the uh, small piece that bolts down first. See if we secure the first piece down just because of the uh, dimensions diameter. So take those first piece down, then this second thicker piece is going to bolt to that piece that we're bolting down. Then we'll get to the rest of the crank support. So these new fun uh, transmission lines, that's going to be your biggest key to working around this crank support, just up here in general. Uh, the coolant lines to help pull down the transmission. So on this crank support, we're hooking up the back piece first. You should use the uh, 90 millimeter bolts. You've got 150, 90, 80, and I believe it was 60 or uh, 55, 55, I think. But the uh, 90 millimeter, it looks like, is what's going to go to hold this back bracket down. Now that we know everything's going to fit, um, we're pretty sure everything's going to fit, no problem. So we're going to go ahead and break the uh, crank bolts. Uh, we have a few options here. 
you've got the standard ARP bolt that we've used before. We've got the kinetic crank saver stud, and then we've got the uh, apex torque uh, balancer bolt as well. So any of those are great. What options. are you doing there, Brian? Mixing up the Molly Lube. If not, then a lot of the clear juice oils and stuff run out first when you go to put put it on the bolt. Little tips and tricks from the experts. And what we've decided to use here is we're using the uh, ARP bolt without the washer. We're going to use this washer supplied by MFP. That's what we're going to use to uh, put the uh, crank support in. And of course, you want to make sure you use the lube. The lube allows you to get the proper torque. Torque is so important, especially with the balancer bolt. You know, we've never lost a crank from a, a crank install. You hear a lot of stories about that. And, uh, you know, we are putting the crank support on here just because we have them. We want to test fit and everything like that. We've never personally lost a uh, crank over the years, but it's very important to use proper torque procedures on these We've things. We've got a digital torque wrench here. I'm going to set it to 100 foot-pounds. That is what this uh, AR crate, ARP crank bolt is designed for. And then uh, what's the factory bolt? That, uh, do you know what that it's one is? It's a torque that yields like 60 foot-pounds and 90 degrees or something like that. So every different type of bolt is going to have a different rating, so that's something that's important to know. If you're using the ARP, it's 100 foot-pounds. And then uh, use the Ford factory procedure for a factory torque deal bolt. But those are one time use. So you can see that's why this factory bolt, they, these tend to stretch. It's a torque deal, and it's really a one time use. Uh, we hear guys putting these back in, but you never want to use this bolt more than the original time. As long as your torque wrench is calibrated properly, which it should be. Now, these electric ones, you always want to turn these back down when you're done for the day, just like they recommend, um, versus leaving them set up at the torque. But, we got it set at 100 foot pounds, so we should be good to go. Well, it looks like we're at a standstill on the crank support. So the crank support is actually touching. Apparently, the crank on this is a little bit thicker. So, uh, yeah, the balancer, sorry. The balancer is a little bit thicker on this. So with this pressing down, we are, we are touching on here. So for this to work, the six rib crank supports, MFP is going to have to go back to the drawing board a little bit and uh, probably have to make the standoffs a little bit bigger and just space everything out a little bit more to make these work on the 2024s. We're going to call it a day with that. Um, we hope to be just a little bit more. We didn't do too bad, but very important to test out that MFP crank support for the guys so people didn't start buying them, throwing them on. That's what we do, though. We test things out. We see how they fit. We see how they work. But we should be just about ready set to blow on. We've got a lot of the coolant hoses ran. All the upfront stuff is done. And... Uh, we should be getting uh, really close here, so maybe tomorrow we'll have it finished up. Um, you know, again, we're doing a few hours a day just, you know, trying some things. We will test fit that rice thermostat tomorrow, but again, this, uh, we're going to call it a, the end of uh, day two.